please check out our shirt on Teespring. The first question at President Kennedy's news conference deals with the Supreme Court decision that a New York school prayer violates constitutional separation of church and state. The president's statement is in the nature of an effort to calm the storm over the decision. Well, I haven't seen the measures in the Congress, and you'd have to make a determination of what the language was and what the effect it would have on the First Amendment. The uh, Supreme Court uh, has made its judgment. A good many people, uh, obviously, will disagree with it. Others will agree with it. But I think that uh, it is uh, important for us, if we're going to maintain our constitutional principle, that we uh, support uh, Supreme Court decisions, even when we may not agree with them. In addition, we have, in this case, a very easy remedy, and that is to pray ourselves. And I would think that uh, it would be a welcome reminder to every American family that uh, we can uh, pray a good deal more at home, we can attend our churches with a good deal more uh, fidelity, and uh, we can make uh, the true meaning of prayer much more important in the lives of all of our children. That power is very much open to us. And I would hope that uh, as a result of this decision that uh, all American parents uh, will intensify their efforts at home. Hey folks, what's going on in the world of Curia? If you notice the opening video of what I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to talk about praying in school. And things, oh, praying in school is banned. But technically it's not really banned because there's some constitutional rights for kids going to school. It's like they're trying to say, uh, you're welcome to pray, but you can't force the kids to pray. I mean, they could pray before the school stars, they could pray during recess or whatever time it takes to go to the next class and there's lunch or after school. But the idea of being uh, pray in school is like, cannot a school cannot endorse any kind of religion. The government cannot endorse any kind of religion. So that's the reason the whole band thing got a little out of whack and a lot of these Christian groups saying that we're being attacked because of our beliefs. No, you're not. You know what I mean? You can pray anytime you want, as long as it doesn't really affect the other class or rough. That's very much plain and simple. And there's one interesting case that came up last year, and here's the video for that. Let's go to the Supreme Court now, where justices will hear arguments today in a case with major implications for the role of religion in public life. A high school football coach who was suspended for praying on the field after games is asking the justices to affirm his right to lead those prayers. Terry Moran reports from the Supreme Court. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. For more than half a century, one of the most controversial topics in constitutional law has been determining the place of religion in public school settings. So now this high school football coach from Washington State has brought a case that raises a question, are his prayers at the 50-yard line private acts of faith or government indoctrination? This morning at the Supreme Court, faith and the First Amendment are on the docket. I just want to be able to practice my faith after a football game. Joe Kennedy was an assistant coach at Bremerton High School near Seattle, and in 2008, he started praying by himself at midfield after games. Nobody should have to be fired or worried about their job if they show any signs of faith. Soon, players were joining him, and the school district had a problem. For the school district, Joe Kennedy was crossing a constitutional line. As a coach and a public employee, his act of faith could be seen as an endorsement by the district of a religion. And so officials told him he could no longer pray with his players if he wanted to keep his job. Some parents said their sons felt pressured to pray with Kennedy, but others supported him. It came to the point where they said, if you were being able to be seen anywhere on the football field in prayer, then we're going to have to suspend you and ultimately it ended my career. Lower courts following long-standing precedent sided with the school district, but now it's in the hands of the Supreme Court with a decision that could have major implications for public schools around the country. This case is going to answer how far uh, uh, teachers retain their constitutional rights. Do they maintain them in the school, in the cafeteria, out here on the football field? That's what we've got to have clarity. Since he lost his job, Coach Kennedy has moved to Florida, but he says he'll be on the first plane back to Washington if he wins this case. And George. Terry, the current lineup on the court likely favorable for the coach? Oh, no question, George. For years, these cases resulted in sharply divided opinions by the court, but the court has changed, as you point out, and the conservative supermajority has proven itself very friendly to plaintiffs like Coach Kennedy. Terry George. Moran, thank you. The Supreme Court did decide that he was right, that he had the right to uh, pray. But the whole point was, you know, making people feel uncomfortable. Not everybody believes in 
certain things about a religion. There's different levels of religion. Some people believe religion should be private. But I think what he did was he wanted to make a case that uh, Christians or Catholics were being attacked um, or religions are being depressed. But it's not depressed, but there's a time and place to everything. You know, I, I can see, you know, different points of view of this. The, the first point of view, I kind of see the, the school reason why they told him this because they're a government thing and then they cannot, government cannot endorse any kind of religion. And because he worked with, with the school, it looks like they're uh, endorsing some kind of religion. And I can understand why some students may feel crumble. There, not everybody believes in this. You know, there could be some kid atheist or Muslim or other types of religion that goes to that school. And maybe they, they feel pressured to pray even they're against, that's not their, their thing, but they feel pressured doing it so they, they can fit in. You know, teenagers, they want to be part of the group and no one want to feel like an outside, especially be part of a, a sports team. You know, in a way, I do believe that he had the right to pray, but, you know, there's a certain way he should have done it. He should have done, you know, in the locker room. I don't know why he had to go straight to the, the middle of the field in front of everybody and do it. He could do it before the game, have, you know, certain group of students that feel like not pressure to do it. But I hope he makes the understanding that, you know, before he does this, you know, to the students, you don't feel like you're doing this, you don't have to do it. So I'm not sure that went on or not. I think like most of these are religious groups that try to push their kind of religious into uh, schools, especially public schools. They don't realize that if, if one religion is being talked, all religions should happen. You know, they want to pray, all religions should be prayed. I mean, it'd be funny as hell is some, you know, some voodoo guy shows up with a bunch of chickens going to a football field and they say, hey, um, you're going to pray, I'm going to pray my way or something like that. So it opens, you know, a door box of these kind of stuff going on. And schools should be an area that be taught. If you, certain religions should be taught more private, especially your church, your parents. There's other places that uh, kids can talk about their beliefs you know, more like a private setting instead of being interrupted. So one time I was talking to my brother-in-law, he's upset because one of my nephews was being taught by a Muslim. He said, you know, we're, we're against this, it's not our belief. I, I explained to him, if one religion is being taught, you know, the Christianity is being taught, other religions can be taught too. That's how they're going to balance it. If you don't like that, I mean, you know, take it, you know, homeschool your kid or Take it to private school, but in public school, the whole is a whole different ballpark than being taught. You know, what really cracks me up when the government tries to get involved about this. You know, they said, "Oh yes, you know, praying should be taught in schools," but this doesn't really concern you about who's praying, who's not praying. You should worry about other things with the government. But they have this whole the moral thing. You know, praying will help. You know, blah blah blah. But there's other ways to teach kids about you know respect and morals, but. Force, but not forcing any type of religion on the people. That's what they're, what I believe they're trying to do is it's a, some kind of form of grooming, the best way of putting it. So that's my point of view of the whole thing. I try to do my best, you know, look at both point of view of the whole thing, try not to be like some of my, but you know, sometimes, you know, certain things should be a topic. So like and subscribe, let me know what you think, maybe you'd be better, thanks for watching.